Hey, hello, welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today I am working on a scrubby on the loom. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Good morning, good morning. Be sure and hop on and tell me where you're from, whether you're live or whether you're not. You don't have to tell me you're not live. You know, there's actually a little dot that tells me uh, when you are uh, uh, when you're live later on. I don't know if you've noticed that. Your little tip on the Facebook Live. If you look at people's comments, you'll see the little red dot, and that means that was live <laughs> and if it's grayed out it's not <laughs> so good morning everyone welcome I hope you are doing well got my coffee <laughs> good morning Kirsty in the UK <laughs> hi Susan Bridget Dawn welcome welcome running a little behind trying to get some things done here I actually was finishing up editing something and I was like right on the cusp so anyway I've saved it and I'm gonna be uploading the um, the marshmallow crochet scarf pattern or, or video soon so that will be up and then we should have the pattern up on the blog soon and uh, anyway, so we'll be able to get that done. Uh, I'm going to work a tutorial today because it's something that I need to um, I need to write up the pattern, I need to blog, I need to video, and do all that kind of stuff. So I figured, you know, what? I'm going to do this on here because it's also part of UFO November. <laughs> so if you don't know. We are doing UFO November, which is fix it, frog it, or friend it. And I had a bunch of scrubbies that I needed to get done. And so no November was my motivator. And I needed to get those done uh, for everyone to have. And I think they'd be good little gifts for people. Um, we are, oh, hey, jo <laughs> Joanne, get my coffee. Let's drink up, buttercup. <laughs> I see Carol hopped on too. Good morning, Carol. Uh, I'm going to go back and say hey. Yes, and Kirsty, yes, it's afternoon there, but hello. <laughs> I hope your day has been well already. Hi, Patty, Ada, Ellie, Stephanie. You're excited about the scrubby, Stephanie? All right. So, um, so fix it, frog it, or friend it, um, or finish it. So if you finish it, um, or fix it, or whatever you got to do to it, finish it up. Um, you finish your project that has been sitting there. It's an unfinished object, a UFO, um, or you um, frog it, which is you pull it apart and you salvage your materials and your tools and use it for something else, um, or you friend it and you can send it to a friend either in exchange to finish each other's things or just a, a crafty friend who would enjoy it as a maybe a treat. Think of it as a um, holiday gift. So um, I know I love receiving Christmas gifts and what better way for another knitter or crocheter to receive something to make. <laughs> so I'm sending off a couple of those today. I've got a call after this and then um, I'm going to finally get a chance to go to the post office today and send off several things that I am friending. <laughs> so I had a little bit of a giveaway yesterday if you missed my Q&A video. I gave away a bunch of crochet books so and I forgot to show two of them I had set aside a couple of um, Christmas ones so two of two people who got crochet books that didn't have Christmassy things I slipped a little Christmassy thing in there for you only had a couple so anyway good morning Daleona good morning I'm so glad you're here all right welcome I'm gonna get started here after I drink up a little <laughs> so um, I did I did um, want to before I before I really dive in I'm going to explain about this project before I start showing it. Um, this project right here, I'm going to do it in kind of reverse order, okay? Um, so whenever I make a video, um, I have to do either step out things or I make the whole thing completely from scratch. Um, what I'm going to do in this case is show you how to, um, I know it sounds funny, but I'm going to show the ending of this first. And then I'm going to show you how to cast on and make one wedge. And so it, the video will make sense when I put it together. <laughs> then I can start a whole other video if you want and I can try uh, testing it and it might become another video. Um, I can test it like this. What this is, is this is one, um, this is one strand of a scrubby yarn from Red Heart. Okay, I don't know if anybody else is making a knockoff one or not, but this is a Red Heart scrubby yarn. It works really great. Um, these are these little... Um, I, I think of them, they're like a little scrubby chip. They're not very big. They're like two and a half inches. They're flexible. They're thick. They're like a garter stitch on the inside. You only need one, um, one strand because this is, I think this is a regular gauge. It's half inch. 
Let me double check my measurement. Yeah, the, the measurement from peg to peg is half inch on here. This is a Cindy Wood loom. Uh, I forget how many pegs is on here, like 21 or something. Uh, so the um, one strand. Now, if you have a um, old Nifty Knitter Bloom Loom, one of these flower looms, the gauge is wider. See how the pegs are closer on this one than they are on this one? So you may want to add something. So what I'm showing on my little uh, screenshot that you may have seen me post already is a strand of cotton and uh, you may have seen this ball in the in the picture and then maybe a strand of this so you could pick a strand of cotton either to match it or accent it and then to go one strand here and then I would try it with this but I haven't actually done that yet and so after I do this first part of the video I'll go ahead and hop on and try and start making one out of um, this one so we'll see how much time we have because uh, I'd like to see how that works up. And I figured, you know what, you guys shouldn't wait. I should just go ahead and do the other one first. So um, this is it here. You can choose to make it, um, you can choose to make it like this without the little hook. Or actually at the end, I'll show you how you can have this little extra and tie your ends together. And this would actually make a great thing. So if you had a hook installed in your bathroom um, or one of those little things, you can slide them on and then they can hang up and they can drain in your shower. But maybe if you have these in a pretty glass dish like, like this on your countertop, you could use it like that. This is, this is just a custard cup. <laughs> um, or you can use like a little a jar like a mason jar and keep them all in there and so this is these are the little scrubbies and um, my daughters have used them on their faces they you know you can use them on your leg whatever and then you could you could throw them in the wash or really just rinse them off and um, let them air dry but um, anyway if you choose to do it with this little hook on it um, they can certainly hang and drip dry so they actually sit flat but anyway it's being funny with me right now <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna get this all set up to take to start the video here. And like I said, I'm gonna show it in different stages. At first you'll be like, whoa, this may look a little complicated. It's it's not, but it, it the bind off may look a little like that. And um I'll try to hopefully I'll explain it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do my setup and um, it's gonna be look like it's for the beginning and then I'm gonna skip to the end. So this is how I film. So if I'm not responding, it's because I'm just acting like I'm I'm filming and you guys are just really, you're just like live participants watching. Is that, if, that's, if that's cool with everyone, I'm gonna say hi before I uh, stop and go on here. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ramona and Debbie. Thanks for joining me and Nancy and Rebecca. I'm so glad you came. And I see Amy jumped on, Amy Tilly. <laughs> Welcome, Amy. She hasn't said anything, but I see her because she's a friend. <laughs> okay, let me get let me get this camera flipped to Rooney here. <laughs> okay, all right. Hey, Yvonne, I see you, Yvonne. <laughs> all right. Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we're gonna work on scrubbies. Yay! You can use these to wash your face or your body. You can put them in a mason jar or a little cup beside your sink. You can hang them in your shower with a little loop and let it dry. These are gonna be really great for your body and you're not gonna keep containing all those things in those big massive scrubbies that you may get from the store. This is actually healthier for you. And you won't be repurposing germs, yay! <laughs> so today you're gonna need a small knitting loom. I have a, um, this is a Cindy Wood. It's a regular gauge, half inch spacing between the pegs. And you can use a larger loom, but you may need uh, extra strands. I'm also using one strand of scrubby yarn. The variegated and the solid come at different stores. This this solid one was from Hobby Lobby, and the variegated ones, I believe, were from Michaels or Joann's. You can get them at all the stores, but they all carry different colors. If you want, with a larger loom, you can work in one strand of cotton or, um, or two, two strands, whatever you want, with one of these. But for now, let's get started with one strand of scrubby yarn. You're going to want your loom 
hook and you're gonna want a loom and then need some scissors. Now, for the bind off, you can choose to have scrap yarn or these are these are gonna be stitch holders. Now, don't let it scare you. These are DPNs. Now, they're actually two different sizes and it really doesn't matter. You just need them smaller. This is really just a stick to hold it. So if you have um, some, like a little stick or something to slide it on, this is gonna help hold some stitches and in the bind off. This other tool I'm using here is a very small um, crochet hook. The size is just, I'm just keeping it small. This is a size F, I forget, uh, this is a US F. It is a, it doesn't actually say which one it is. So it's gonna be a, probably a three and three quarter millimeter. That's fine, you can use a three and a half or a three, whatever works. But this is a size uh, F hook and you can also use a counter or, or whatnot. This would be just for counting how many wedges you've got done if you can't tell, because on this project it's hard to tell where one, in, uh, one wedge stops and starts after you've got it worked up. All right, those are the tools. Let's get started. Okay, I don't know how long that took, but hopefully, because normally when I'm filming, it tells me how long something took. So, <laughs> uh, let's see, which, Hey, I'm gonna let you viewers decide. Um, let's see, we're going to, um, I'm gonna bind off and I'm gonna use this this particular yarn. When I get started, do you want me to start again with this yarn? Actually, actually I should. Y'all can decide later on the other one that I do. Um, I've got, um, I can use these two together for the next one when I do it on this limb here. Or maybe I could use the do the purple and the pink together. So y'all, <laughs> yeah, you're a VIP audience, Ada. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna set these all aside. All this fun scrubby yarn up here, look at that, isn't that fun? Do you like that in the corner up there? This is citrus, Red Heart Citrus. Look how they stack, aren't they cute? Yeah, this was my first one, I did it too loose, okay? So if you wanna compare and contrast, here's this, this one here, and I'm pulling on it, and this. So I actually figured out a better way to um, get the middle part uh, together and um, make it tighter, so um, I, I'm really happy with these. These are very solid, I'm, I'm pretty happy. So, all right, let me put these away. Kristen, get to the nitty gritty. Okay, okay, okay. Do y'all like it with the hook? Okay, see, I'm gonna still keep talking. Do y'all like it with this little holder here? Because I guess when you wash, you can ignore it, but I think it's really great to have it to, to do. Okay, again, y'all, I'm gonna start on the bind off. Okay, I know it sounds funny, but if you're just if you're just joining me, I have to start on the bind off first and then I'm going to show you how to cast on, all right? All right, hang on. I got some coffee. Okay, I'm back. I've got the wedges completed. It looks only half of a circle, but I promise this is enough. So that's why using this counter is gonna be helpful. Uh, I've got it cut off with about 12 inches or so. This is probably maybe nine inches of this tail here. I'm not gonna need much of it. It's only to um, finish off the end. And I'm going to start picking up these stitches and put them on a holder. Okay, so this happens to be my holder. I'm gonna start with this last stitch. And go to the next one. Start lifting them up and sliding them on. The way I'm picking them up would be the way a knit stitch would sit on a needle. turn in the correct direction. Okay. Now, this, uh, so I've got 
one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six stitches on my holder here. And then this one right here, I'm gonna make sure it's, it's tightened so it's about the same gauge as here. I'm gonna turn it around like this. And I'm right-handed, my dominant hand is on the right, and so I'm gonna work towards the um, working yarn, I'm gonna work towards the left. So if you need to change the direction because you your left hand is more dominant, then you can do that. Um, but you need to work towards the tail, if that makes sense. Now, when I say the tail, like the cut working yarn, <clears throat> not this beginning one here, okay? This is from the cast on. All right, so, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to, um, get this other one on okay so i can sort of lay this down or let it hang and then um, i'm just going to pick up loosely these stitches okay these were half hitch cast on it's a nice loose cast on it's really it can be really hard to see and that's okay all the manner is i'm just trying to get stitches on here so i'm going to go through and kind of mess with it here and find these loose stitches here okay now, when you're first starting, if you want, you could go and um, uh, you could you could go and uh, put um, a, a um, excuse me, you could put a cotton thread or something through the beginning, and that's okay to pick them up. Um, these I'm going in from the back of the stitch. See how they're really loose. Once I pull on them, you can see them. They're very loose. Okay, so I just kind of go in through the back. One, two three, four, five, and you're not actually gonna have this sixth one. Um, we didn't start with the hard slip knot, and the five actually works out really well for the math here. I, I, know, I know it sounds funny, but it actually does work out to, um, to cinch this all in together, and so I'm not gonna worry about trying to find the, the end where it has slipped down. I just need those five. So now what I need to do is rotate this around like this, and this is how we're going to do this. It's gonna be a Russian join. However, I'm going to stop and go back just for a second and pick up these stitches in the middle because what's gonna happen is this is gonna wrap around here and then this middle part um, would be a hole. So I'm going to cinch that up with my crochet hook. That's where the hook comes in. This is a little magic part here. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go through and pick up these stitches. And you can also do this before you pick these up. So it's in no particular order. You can either pick these stitches up first or second, but I'm gonna pick up these stitches here. And I'm just going through and getting these loose side stitches. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, okay, so I've got about four on here, and um, I want to grab this last one on here, like this, okay, and I'm gonna slide it off. So I'm gonna work this, this loop here through all of these. So I'm gonna turn my hook and capture that in. Okay, I'm gonna get it through there, one, and it's got like a little bitty extra piece. So if you have to do one at a time to see it, you can. Okay, so now that I've gotten through all of those, I'm just gonna slip it back on, all right? So what I've done is I picked up that middle section here and it's, I'm not gonna have to try and sew it in later, which is really nice, right? I don't have to use a, a needle uh, to do that, a tapestry needle. I did have to have to use a hook though. Um, that sounded funny. I did have to have a hook in order to do it. All right, oh. <laughs> I still need my hook. Okay, <laughs> uh, so what I'm gonna do is, um, this is how you start the Russian join. You're going to slip this back needle your the first stitch onto your hook just slip it on okay this is the only time you're slipping this stitch and then pull it off the needle and rotate around to the front and we're going to find this first stitch here okay i've got this first stitch and i'm going to go in to the front of it this direction okay 
this is going knitwise. So I come around to the front like I'm going to knit into the stitch. Uh, if you're a loom knitter, you may not know that, but I'm going to the front of it in between the first and second stitches, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and use, use this as a kind of a backboard to help you see the stitch and pull it through. Um, but you can get that nice and tight on there and then pull it through this way. Okay, and once you do that, you can just push that holder off, okay? And now I'm gonna rotate to the back and do the same thing. I'm gonna go between these two stitches here and I'm gonna go in knitwise, all right? And then use this little backboard. Again, you can slide it off and do it, but I think this works as a nice little backboard, like we're in basketball. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to pull and slide that through to make sure I'm getting all my stitch here. Pull it through there and then slide that off. Okay, making sure not to pull these off. And then I'm gonna rotate to the front again. Go in between these stitches. Okay. And get that on through. Slide that off. Go to the back. I'm just going to the opposite side. Slide it off, go to the front. Slide that off, go to the back. Slide it off, go to the front. When you when you do this the first time, it won't it won't be this short, but after you get used to it, it will it will take less and less time. Okay, now I have one on uh, the front and one on the back left. That's why just having five on the front works out so magically because now I can put this down and this last stitch is the one with the working yarn. If you notice, it's like a really loose stitch. So you can go through there, pull that on through, and now we slip this off, we're done. And we're just gonna pull through this cut yarn. There we go. So we've got that whole round thing together. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? So you can um, go here, and especially because it's really messy, I'm just gonna make a nice knot here and <clears throat> tie that knot. And uh, I mean, you can weave it. If, if you're using a nice yarn, you can really see it, then, then just nice uh, weave it through like you normally would, but you can use a knot here. You can choose to cut it right here, or you can make a, um, make it, you can choose to cut it or make a loop. I'm gonna make a loop. Okay, so I made a nice square knot here, and so that's not going anywhere. And double check all that, go ahead and cut it off. All right, I have made my scrubby, yay! <laughs> so uh, now I've got a couple of these. I can hang them up in the bathroom and I can designate them for my different kids or family members, um, or you can just have multiple for yourself. Um, put them in a canister or whatnot on top of a, um, uh, on by your countertop and wherever you want. Put them in the kitchen, anything. This would make a really good gift for the holidays, I think. Wouldn't that be fun? So just make them to your heart's content, Give it, get a, all the same color or make multiple colors for people and put them in a little package, tie it up and uh, give it. Some people make even their own handmade soap, which is a really cool, fun gift. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Thank you again for watching Good Knit Kisses. Have a great day and happy looming. Bye-bye. Okay, so that's, that's what I do. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go to the beginning of the video, okay? Did y'all like that? It has kind of like this cucumbery look and pumpkin. <laughs> it's very fresh. It reminds me of Bath and Body Works. <laughs> so if y'all saw that skip in the video, I got a phone call. <laughs> it's like, what? So, all right. 
And you'll notice, um, you'll notice that um, <laughs> if, you, if you go back and look, I can't edit it out, but this should have said six because I was at the end of my video. So I'm not even gonna worry about it, <laughs> but I will show you using this. But if you look at the thing, I didn't wanna point it out, but I just noticed, I just said, hey, use this. But anyway, you would have done six already on there, so. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so let me put these aside. <clears throat> of course, I'm talking to live audience right now. Getting my yarn ready. Can you, um, I'm sorry, Stephanie, you're saying, can you use that join for two square pieces or just circles? Um, oh, you can use that join for square pieces. You just don't need the, you don't need to use the, the hook through that middle part. Cause um, if we didn't, if, if I didn't do that, you would be coming back here in a moment and trying to sew that up and that would be annoying. Plus it could leave a um, knot in the middle and so there is no knot anywhere in here and you're actually utilizing the beginning and end tail right here. So it works out really beautifully this way. Um, so the way that I'm gonna write this, um, my notes are right here. Um, I'm actually, um, I'm calling an, um, well, anyway, you'll see how I end up writing it. I'll end up adding this, um, the pattern link. Uh, I'll put it in the blog and, and everything, but I'm gonna go through how I write this up. Um, it's really, really similar to the hexagon um, blanket, but um, I, I, changed up, I changed it up a little bit, and, um, and then the way I'm writing it is gonna be different, so um, I don't have an issue there. So. I'm using different stitches and anyway the way it is uh, anyway it's different so um, let me get a drink and I'll start got some coffee um, um, can you hold on just for a minute hey Gary mm -hmm. can you um, I can't listen to my voice now right now but the school nurse said she's in call Can you um, ask John to call Chisholm and ask if there's anything going on there? I can't check it right now. I'm live right now. Okay. Um, this, okay, so let me get my notes here. Okay, I don't know if there's gonna be a lot of noise here because I had to tell them about the phone call. Um, I don't know if I need any stitch markers to show you guys. Um, oh, by the way, if you're wondering how big this is, it is two and a half inches in diameter. Yeah, two and a half. All right, to get started, we're gonna wanna cast on six pegs. You don't need much. Uh, I'm not gonna do any slip knot because I don't like any hard knots at the beginning, especially something that's gonna be rubbing on your body. Uh, so I'm going to um, do a half hitch and I'm going to flip around uh, this to where the tail comes out the bottom. And then, uh, so if I was e-wrapping, um, it always comes out the top, right? So we want the tail to come out uh, the bottom. So I'm gonna leave a little tail here and I'm going to um, flip, it, flip it to where, let me see, let me get this in here. Get that trapped in. I'm gonna start on peg one, I'm gonna work my way this way. And I'm gonna flip this down with my thumb to where this tail is gonna go this direction. And I'm gonna place it on peg one and then cinch it up here. And then I come back here and flip it down like this and put it on peg two and tighten it up. Come back and flip it. So I'm just using my thumb to flip it. So I'm putting my working strand and my dominant, uh, my non-dominant hand pulling. I'm pulling to the left and I'm gonna flip it with my right downward. Do you see that? Okay, so it's tightening up. It's tightening it up in the back 
and flip it down. Oh, I was going to pick it up and show you, but that's harder to do for me. So I'm going to put it down like this and tighten it up. And one last one. Okay. So it looks just like the E-wrap. It looks just like the E-wrap on the inside, but this, this is coming, this working strand is coming from the bottom of the stitch and not the top. And it actually does, it does make a difference. And it picks up the stitches easily in the end when we bind off. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, we're going to flat knit this entire row. This first stitch though, when you see the written pattern, it's gonna say FKL, that's flat knit leave. So we're wrapping this peg and not actually working it. So I'm gonna go through here and knit all these pegs. Now on this particular loom, um, it, the heads on it are um, large and they can um, oh, tighten up this first stitch here because it's gonna get really loose if you don't um, because it doesn't have a slip knot and then you can kind of wrap around this peg here. Um, but anyway, if you, if you make this first, this flat knit way too tight, then it won't go over your heads of your pegs here. So be uh, mindful of that. Now, so that's flatten it the first row, but leave the first peg. Then we're gonna go, um, we're gonna skip, we're gonna slip this first peg here, and we're going to purl um, to um, one before the flat knit, the FKL, okay? So we're gonna purl all the way to here, to the second to last peg. If you haven't purled before, you're gonna put your strand below your loop. You're gonna pick up the strand and pull it through your loop, pull off the old loop, and put on the new loop. Picking up that purl from the ocean. So really, you're only purling four pegs on this first row. Well, this is actually row two, but on this particular first row of purl. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, FKL, so flatten it and leave that first peg and knit to the end. Okay, one more. Okay, bring your yarn around and we're gonna purl until that last one that was done. The main thing is knowing what is your peg one and what is your end peg. If you wanted to make these bigger, you just add on more pegs. And so I've done three here. And now we're going to flatten it. And I'd like to kind of pull it back a little bit and then um, flatten it. One, two, three. Purl two. The directions again are purl till that flat knit because this one was done before. If you need a marker to tell you that, then um, you could put a stitch marker on here, but it'd be harder to just, you're gonna be moving it a lot, especially because this is so small. Okay, so this row here, I'm flat knitting two of them. Well, and then I'm gonna go back here and purl one. Okay, I still need to do this flat knit leave. So this is my flat knit leave and then I'm basically just knitting off this one here. Okay, so now what we do is um, we are going to um, purl, uh, we're gonna work these stitches, uh, the bottom loop over the top and you have to be careful because this last one, it, it jumps on me sometimes. So I'm gonna make sure that it's on the top because it just slid to the bottom. Okay. And then I just knit all these stitches over. We just work, work the stitches. And um, this is the end of row two because row two is gonna be written as uh, slip and purl to before FKL, 
and then my instructions are repeat row one and two until peg two has been flat knit leave and peg one is flat knit and then work all the pegs until uh, the last. So I'm working the pegs. I've got this last one. All right, now this is row three. Row three is used on all the wedges except for the very last one. And all I'm doing is simply purling um, to one peg from the end. And see, I've gotten that too tight. So if you did do it too tight, uh, I just kind of work it off with my pick here. I hope you can see that. I'm getting off camera a little bit, I think. Again, if it's too tight, just work it off with your tool. I don't mind it so much because I like the scrubby nice and tight, so just be careful with your loom. Okay. So now that we've got this last one left, see I haven't worked that one at all, now I'm going to start my wedge again. Okay, so when I start the second wedge, I've already completed one. Okay, so that's one wedge complete. I don't click this until I'm done with that wedge. So if I put this down in the middle of the wedge and I haven't clicked this, I know that I still have to complete all those little things because I know where I stopped and wrapped and everything because the little wraps on there will tell me and you can see where the working yarn is coming from. So again, to start this, I'll start this right now and then I'll say, um, and then you'll, you'll finish this off. So when I start again, I just leave the first peg, knit to the end, Slip peg one, purl, again, purl this one here, and after you purl, it's going to be flatten it and leave and then keep working. So if I had to put this down like this and I came back to it, I would know that I see two wraps here and I've, I've worked these two and I still need to finish here and then go back until I get to this next one here. So I hope that makes sense. So just so you can see what one looks like, see how small it is? And it will grow until it looks like about half of a circle, but I promise it will join up and look just like this. So keep going. Be sure and click when you have or write on a scratch piece of paper like a tally mark. Once you have the five completed, or, and well, actually you do the six completed, uh, stop and don't do the purl all the way to the end and I'll meet you back up to join it together. one <laughs> did you like that so if you're just joining me at the beginning of this video I actually showed the end <laughs> so if you're like what just happened <laughs> so um, what I can do now is set up to show um, with a strand of cotton and a strand of the scrubby and make it on um, this loom do you guys want to see it on this one what time do we have Oh, I have not. I'm sorry. I didn't even see the live comments. Are you going to show it on the pink loom? Yes, I'm going to show on the pink loom. Show the inside. I did. Oh, I didn't even notice y'all writing. I'm sorry. My my thing wasn't uh, scrolled to the right point, so it wasn't like refreshing. Okay, so yes, I'll go ahead and show this one now. Okay. <laughs> sorry. What? You got to rewatch your kitty was distracting you. <laughs> was your kitty loving on you this morning? Oh, the sweet. Okay, I'm gonna let, you know what, I'm not, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I know what I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show the purple because I know that Carol would appreciate it. So let me move these aside. I'm gonna do this purple and this, nothing, it's nothing. 
Okay. Uh, I'll do this purple and this uh, cotton. Does that sound good? And then you can see, hopefully you can see them intertwined together, but they sort of match, right? Okay. Getting things ready. Purple will show up better on pink. Oh man, I need to trim my nails. Okay. Let's get this ready. Okay. I don't know why I just pulled it out because I need to have it all nice and pretty, but that's okay. All right. Normally y'all are seeing me show everything and I'm just having you see my face. <laughs> okay. Ooh, I'm going to use the loom as my bowl. <laughs> okay, let me flip it so you can see. <laughs> okay. I didn't say citrus on camera for that other one. I just realized. That's, that's goofy. I don't know if I should show the whole thing here or what. I guess I need to make the whole thing. Oh gosh, I'm not sure I have enough battery for all that. We'll see what one wedge looks like. We'll see. <laughs> this is a we'll see it show. <laughs> we'll see. Um, it's a little more balanced. I never said what size these were, but these, oh, you're not watching my smile. I've got a, my blemish today. This is a five, uh, yeah, a three, uh, three point seven five millimeter, and this one is a an eight, a five millimeter. So I just grabbed two of them just because they're thin. Because it's not about gauge; it's just about holding the stitches. So, all right, all right, y'all are gonna see this from the beginning because <laughs> I gotta shoot it again. itch. All right. I don't have one without, oh no I don't. Okay. That's really dark. Really dark. It's kind of dark. This is what we do y'all. <laughs> This is real. Oh. Okay. All right. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am such a guru today. Okay. All right. Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are working on scrubbies. And I have made a scrubby over on this Cindy Wood loom over here, and it's a smaller gauge. And now we're going to make it on a larger gauge loom. And this is the Nifty Knitter uh, Bloom Loom or Flower Loom. And whereas the Nifty Knitter is a three quarters of an inch wide uh, gap, this one over here is a half. So if it's in the regular gauge, and this is going to be in actually the um, extra large gauge, or actually that's a large gauge. Anyway, I'm getting myself confused. But anyway, they're two different gauges. So, I'm gonna start over. That was really spastic. <laughs> okay. 
Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host Kristen and today we're working on scrubbies. Yay! So today we're going to work on a uh, larger gauge loom. This one is a three quarter inch spacing between the pegs and I've got another one working on um, one strand of scrubby yarn on the Cindy Wood loom which is a half inch measured. And uh, today I'm going to use two strands, but one is a cotton and one is the scrubby yarn, the scrubby yarn here. And you can get it in solid or variegated. It just depends upon the store that you get it at. I got some solid back here from Hobby Lobby and this one was from Michaels or Joann's. And um, we're gonna get started. It doesn't matter which cotton you pick. I've uh, picked this variegated one that's gonna stand out against hopefully this purple. And uh, the tools you're gonna need is your loom, your tool pick. You're gonna need a, um, a small crochet hook. This is about a three and a half millimeter or so. It's a size F. And then of course some scissors and then a stitch um, counter, um, row counter. And um, these right here are meant to hold your stitches. You can use something to hold your stitches. If you wanna use scrap yarn, that's fine. These are happen to be DPNs, double pointed needles. It doesn't matter. These, in fact, are two different sizes. Um, they're a size, um, one's a five and one's an eight. So it doesn't really matter. They're just to hold the stitches and it's for the bind off. I promise it's actually easier than it looks and they're just to hold the stitches and actually they help you. So um, just get some sticks. <laughs> and then of course the, the crochet hook is, um, is necessary. You do need that. All right, so um, let's get started. I've got one strand of each and I'm going to do a half hitch cast on. I'm gonna put the extra strand in here, the little tail, and my peg one is going to be here and I'm gonna work my way to the sixth peg down here. Uh, we're gonna hold our working strand out to the left like this and flip it down and around so that the working strand is on the bottom. It's the opposite of an E-wrap stitch and put that right on. That stitch, you can pull on this bottom strand and wrap it around and make it a little tighter. And then continue to flip it downward and put them on there, making sure to hold two strands as one. And keep going and tighten that up. And I go a little slower on the other video, so if you need slower, check that one out. The description will have any links to blogs and other videos. And be sure when you do this, make sure you move the working strand to the opposite side, the way that you're working, or in, in the direction you're working to the opposite side of the peg you're actually working with, or else you're gonna trap it in there wrong. Okay, so I've tightened that up. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I'm going to um, flatten it this entire row. Now, the only key is the first peg, or this is called my last peg, because this is gonna be peg one, and this is my last peg. The last peg is going to be flat knit leave. I'm going to leave it on here and work my way down. So picking up these strands together and flat knitting these off. All the way to the first peg. Whoa, and that's really going to be loose and then I'll tighten that up because that's where I had that half hitch. There are no knots in here because I don't like having a scrubby that's got a knot in it if I'm going to be washing myself. It's not very nice on my face. Uh, it's not nice on my body so that wouldn't be good. So this is going to have two strands on it. It's technically four but we're holding two strands as one. So this is one, two loops here at the end. Uh, if you've got a little too tight, um, be sure and pull on it just a little bit. If you have a, um, a problem on this loom with the pegs popping out, you can put a little bitty piece of a paper towel or a cotton yarn down in here and push the peg down and then trim it off and it'll keep some friction in here. So that's the biggest complaint on these looms. Otherwise, they work just fine. Uh, now I'm going to um, flip to the front here and start purling. I'm slipping the first peg and purling all the way to the end, except we don't work with that flat knit leave. That FKL is what it's going to be written as on the pattern. So the peg that we leave alone is always going to be the last one that we do. We're going to repeat this row one and two. 
Okay, I had a connection issue, so for my live viewers, I'm having to go back because I want to make sure and get sure. I'm not sure what I was saying. I don't know if this will line up or not, so I can't check it. We're going to be repeating this row one and two throughout all these wedges. We're making a bunch of wedges to make our circle. Okay, so now that I've done this peg, this one right before this left peg alone, pull this to the back a little bit and then go ahead and flatten it. And when I pull it to the back, I'm giving it a little bit of um, more of a stitch room so that it's not um, completely tight. And just loosely lay this over. If you need to just work that last stitch to help you and hold it in, then you can do that, but you might wanna add a little bit of a slack. Okay, and work these pegs here. making sure that these two are, stay on top here. Okay. A little tight. All right. So now I'm gonna pull it to the back and go in between this number one and two peg and purl. So we just purled four stitches that last time and now we're gonna purl three stitches. And it's really not about the quantity. Um, I'm just pointing out that it's getting less each time. You can make this a larger scrubby by simply adding more pegs in. So if you wanted to do eight pegs and make it a little bit larger, you could do that. Okay, so I've got to the back here. And I'm gonna flatten it and leave that first peg and knit the rest of them. And it's a short row. This is a short rowing without a wrap and turn. It's a wrap and turn on top, but it's not on bottom. And so I'm wrapping and turning, but I'm just wrapping on the top. And really what it is, is I'm short rowing without if I did the wrap and turn, it would add an extra stitch in there. Technically, the reason why I'm not knitting this off is because it's more of a memory thing. So if you noticed I'm not working these and I'm wrapping and turning, um, it's simply because um, it helps you remember where to stop. You could knit this off and remember to stop right before, but it, in it, you can make this embed in your memory better if you just leave these alone, if that makes sense. So I've got one more peg here, and I'm going to purl. And I still need to do the flat knit. So I'm gonna flat knit these, and work to the end, all right? And now uh, this is the time where we're gonna be purling, but in order to purl, we need to work the rest of these stitches. So technically we're not knitting anything new here, and this row technically is a purl row, but we're knitting these stitches that we left as a reminder of where to start and stop those short rows. I hope that makes sense. Okay. It's a little tight, so I like to pull on it like that. And if you notice, if you like to crochet and um, and you're using this, you could actually kind of hold your hold your yarn on the left hand here or your non-dominant hand, kind of like you might with crocheting um, when you're purling. And see how it slides on here, and then I can tighten my tension up a little bit. See that? It works really well with this little loom. 
Uh, I haven't necessarily done this on other like large looms, but it's kind of cool. Okay, so I've done everything. Don't purl that last one. And then that's wedge one. So I just come over here, click, and I've got one wedge done, and look at that. So it's nice and thick. So you can tell this is gonna be a bigger one. So it's definitely gonna be a bigger, um, it's gonna be a bigger wedge than, uh, it's gonna be a bigger scrubby than this one, um, because one wedge on this other one look like this. You can see the difference. Can you tell? So that's that. And then I'm gonna work all these and continue making my scrubby and um, you can meet me back in the end and I will show you how to uh, bind this off. So you're gonna work this wedge. Sorry, let me start again. Let me get down to the end. Thank you for the reminder. Oh my gosh, thank you for the reminder, seriously. Um, <clears throat> okay, you're gonna work this first wedge, uh, row one and two. Um, just as you did and then you're going to purl back and that's row three when you do the whole purl back and you're going to work um, six total wedges the last on the sixth one do not work a row three and your working strand is going to stop right here don't work that purl round and meet me back up when you hit here and you've got uh, six wedges completed oh my gosh who said that was that stephanie Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> you like this, Bridget? Yeah, I remembered on the first one because I was kind of talking to you guys and then I'm thinking, okay, I'm good, let's go. But yeah, this is the second in a, in a series. So you're right, I needed to mention it again because they won't be on the same video. Appreciate it. Walmart has a scrubby yarn now? Nice. You're having connection issues in your building today, Carol? I'm sorry. Oh my word, y'all, it's that phone again. As my friend's mama used to say, oh my word. Vote for me. Vote for me. No, vote for me. Vote for me. <laughs> one more week oh my gosh and then everyone can be friends again <laughs> oh my
my gosh. Oh. Oh, if we don't laugh, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's not telemarketers. It's people calling for voting. I know it. I'm on the do not call list. <laughs> Seriously. I make looming look fun. You're going to have to give it a try. Oh, yay. Yeah, looming can totally be fun. It's actually very freeing and you don't drop your stitches oh, as easily <laughs> I guess if you're moving them around a lot and stuff and you're trying to mess with them you can you could drop them or you have an animal or a child around oh well, yeah so I guess that could happen <laughs> um, I finished a wedge and I didn't click my thing didn't I I got a call from the Firefighters Association on my cell phone yesterday, and I thought that they only call like house phones, but apparently they call cell phones. Oh, what are, what are people saying? I'm trying to go back. Keep with it, Chris. You can do it if you can crochet. Sorry, I'm trying to read y'all's comments. I really shouldn't. <laughs> y'all chat. Feel free to chat. I'm like, but I want to be part of the conversation. Did I repeat that row? Did I knit that one over earlier? Oh well. I was reading conversations. It's not normal <laughs> while I'm looming. Anybody participating in UFO November? Have you started picking out your projects? Be sure and post them to the event page if you are and type like UFO 1, UFO 2, you know, unfinished objects. Um, if you haven't been paying attention to my things. <laughs> We're doing UFO November and so any unfinished projects that you have um, that you have let gather dust, um, pull them out, no shame, post it on our our Facebook event page and um, we're gonna try and finish them and encourage each other and every Friday we'll post new ones or post like what we finished and um, it's finish it Friday right finish or frog it oops I don't need it I don't need to do that one I need to leave that alone
You know, like how I'm using this as a bowl, <laughs> the, the loom. I also have a soap, a mesh soap bag on two different looms. So if you're interested in that, um, that that is made, um, you can make it on this one. Uh, I've got videos on making it on this one or on the um, the sock loom, um, just like the all-in-one loom, but the sock loom from Knitting Board. Oh, I can't do that one. Slip it. So that's another one, especially if you like to make soap. You know, when I purl this last row, I'm always so tight. Um, if you make soap for people, um, that's a good one to give. And you can also hang those up, and they're nice and clean alternatives to those big, um, big loofahs. Anyone paying attention and notice I, I did an extra wedge without <laughs> marking it? I'm afraid I'm like gonna half pay attention to my little clicker because I don't usually use the clicker. Um, I just write it elsewhere. I'm kind of liking it though. I know a lot of people hang it from their neck and use it for projects. So I'm trying to be better about showcasing it. Um, also, um, I did something, uh, if you, if you don't like this join and you're like, oh gosh, then I'm gonna have to make one, then do another and then do another. You can actually do two projects on this loom here because I've only used half the peg count. And what I did is for the last one, when I finished, um, all the way up until the bind off, I would cut a 12 inch tail um, and then go to the next one and work another one. And so you could have two on here or you can do three on here at the same time. I actually had three going. I think people misunderstood when I said I was working on three at the same time. Uh, yesterday I talked about it. Um, uh, I wasn't working them each row like that. I was, I just did, I completed one up until I need to bind off and then I, um, and then I stopped working on it and went to the next one. So rather than, I just waited on the bind off for three of them, if that makes sense. I think even Carol thought that. I think that was Carol that had made a comment to me. Um, or maybe it was Joanne that I couldn't, like, didn't see how I could work three at the same time. Because I didn't. I could have. Like some people like to work two socks at the same time. And they will do that. They'll work from two separate balls. I think I actually got an extra row in on that last wedge. I'm afraid I'm gonna have an issue. Hopefully, hopefully I don't. I mean, hopefully I didn't. I just forget, oh, okay. See, that tells me where to stop because it's double thick there. I know to stop there. There's a plane. Oh, Carol, that was you. That's what you thought? Yeah. 
I'm good. I'm not that good. <laughs> okay, work all these over. Y'all waiting till the end to see how big it is and how stretchy and everything. I mean, I'm being quite honest. I have not done this one with two strands. I, I just did it because y'all wanted to see it. And so I don't even know like how loose it will be. And so basically this is like killing two birds with one stone. I'm basically taking care of test knitting at the same time as filming. <laughs> So hopefully it works out and I don't have to scrap the project. I mean, I'm being quite honest. It looks really cool. I like the a combination of the cotton and the scrubby yarn uh, in this pattern so far. And it's definitely bigger. And I didn't do some clicker. Someone is asking about Halloween earlier, my costume. I don't celebrate Halloween, and so I didn't have a costume. I mean, it's it's fine. I just I just don't I don't celebrate it. So I do appreciate different costumes, but <laughs> for the fun of it. I mean, why would I not? I do theater. <laughs> I, I appreciate theatricality for sure. Hi, Louisa. I see that she joined. Sometimes I wonder if y'all, if, if I had a camera, like watching me do the, the thing, if that would be interesting. See me looking up and reading y'all's comments and <laughs> probably catch me scratching my nose or something. And all the OCD people go, ew, or, or the germ, germaphobe. <laughs> Fiber gets me, I don't know. Oh, see, there's his drop stitch. There's one. Okay. Who that is? This is why it's important to to pull back on your stitch before you start wrapping these, because I, I I do I get too tight, especially when someone's watching me. I get I get start getting really tight on things. I'm trying to go fast and so I just, that's just how I do it unfortunately. So just reminding you guys to, 
you may have a little issue, like see I'm gonna have an issue when I pull these off just because I get so tight like that. This is on that, that last row three. So <clears throat> I finished a row five and this is the last time I'm gonna purl back this way. Alarm on my phone. So to everybody who is watching, um, did, uh, I'm sorry, I asked you guys if you did your UFOs. I think only like one person responded. Does anybody else uh, joining on the UFO uh, November? Did y'all, were y'all able to go through any of your, your projects or y'all doing that in the next couple of days? Oh, Carol has to leave? Okay, have a, good, have a great day. You are, Elizabeth? Awesome. What are you going to do? You know what projects you're going to do? You'll be doing UFO November? Awesome, Ellie. Oh, Dawn's got that dastardly button she talked about yesterday. Sorry, you can't have too many things to finish before Christmas. Oh, okay. Well, sometimes people have, like I had a gift that I meant to do last year and I never did it. Like I didn't finish this one thing. And so, if I finish it, I could give it again this year. Because <laughs> it's still cute. And it would still be fine. I think I ended up buying something last minute. Okay. Here we go. Lost one. And then now let's knit this over. Okay, I think I'm at the end, y'all. Yep. Now, the other one worked really well, it, so it looked like a half a circle, and the other one worked really well when it was at the half circle point, so I'm hoping that I don't have an issue, because it's really hard to tell, but I think it's gonna be fine. Okay, I'm getting ready for this bind off here. Let me get my stuff ready. At the end, let me get something to drink. Okay. It should be five if I counted right. I mean, it should be six if I counted right. Okay, so I have finished my sixth one. I am uh, at the end of this peg here. And instead of purling back on the row three, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna start binding it off. It looks like about half of a circle and we're gonna join this up. Uh, we're going to put this down and you can go ahead and cut off about uh, 12 inches or so of your yarn. So you don't need that anymore. Just leave that there. Um, you don't need that anymore. And I'm going to pick up one of your um, double pointed needles or whatever stitch holder you're going to use and start at the last peg and pick that up and slip on your uh, stitch holder here. And we're going to pick these up and slip them on this way. Lift back. 
slip that needle through the front of the stitch and continue until you've picked up all six stitches. And then this stitch is going to be a little loose. Just tighten that up because that's the working. We're going to still continue calling this the working yarn or the working strand. And you can move your loom aside. You don't need that anymore. Okay. And so now I'm going to turn this around to where the working strand is in my left. I'm going to work my bind off towards the working strand. And so the way, because I'm right-handed, I'm working to the left. You might want to flip it around and work the opposite direction if you were left-handed. Uh, now I need to pick up these stitches here on another needle and I'm also going to be picking up loops here. Um, <clears throat> on the last video I showed how to pick them, uh, pick up these stitches first and then work, but I'm going to show you how to pick up these middle stitches um, uh, first before you pick these up. So if you want to try it both ways, you can look at both videos. Um, we're going to pick up our hook here and we're going to work, this is going to be the inside of our circle and in order to draw it in tighter and not have to use a tapestry needle, I'm going to uh, pick up all these stitches. So I've got um, a stitch here, one, two, three, four, five, I've got all these stitches here and then I'm going to slip on this last stitch on my, um, uh, on my needle back here and pull that out. I'm gonna make sure that this is at the end of my hook here, and then I'm gonna pull through these stitches. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, all these extra stitches. And I'm going backwards. And if you are in my live audience, I'm gonna let you see this. I dropped something. I dropped a stitch. Shoot. I dropped it. What did I do? I haven't ever done that before. Hold on. Hold on. That's that's new. That's a new thing. Never done that. One, two, three, four, five. This is it. And it is. Shoot. Um, okay, hang on. I got to figure this out. Hold on. Again, that has not happened to me before, and now I haven't I haven't seen how to fix that. So that's new. It's really loose. Hang on. That can't be it. Oh my gosh, I'm thinking that's just, okay, that's just from that part right there. That's the hard part of having these two strands. That's really what happened is I dropped the, um, shoot. I dropped one of the strands, but not both. And so, and then I pulled on my yarn so much, it really yanked it over. Wow, that's where it was. Did you see that? I'm not even gonna try and teach how to fix that because that just, that's how long that took me. Do you see now I've got it back on here? So <clears throat> these have that sort of pearl bump here. It looks like a scarf. And so I had to get it to where this matched and it was like giant. But see how it's back now? <laughs> 
But I pulled so hard on one of these other ones while I was messing up, so it made it, it faked me out and I thought I had lost that stitch there. So now I'm gonna kinda even these out a little bit. That's what happens, live TV. I know it's not really TV, but <laughs> this is live. Gotta love it. I'm gonna get some coffee, hold on. Y'all still with me? Okay. Oh, fatigue. Okay. All right, so I'm going to pick up my stitches here in the middle to draw it up, and I'm just gonna pick up these uh, loose ones on the end and go through. And I've got, I actually don't need to pull all of them, so I'm just gonna pull a few. And what you didn't see is I, I had dropped a stitch and I made some of these extra loose. They shouldn't be on yours, not as loose as mine. I'm gonna go to the end and pick up this last stitch here. And I'm gonna hold this one back here so I don't drop these two strands here. And let's see if I can pull this through here. It's definitely harder with the two strands. So I've got that first one. The second. The third. And you pay, may pick up more. Um, the fourth and the fifth. Okay, so what that's doing is that's drawing in that tight uh, center. And let's slip this back on. Okay, pull it out that direction because that was easier without the hook. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick up my next one and we're gonna pick up all these stitches here. These stitches are the loose ones from the half hitch cast on and are just gonna come from the back of this first very loose one like this. Okay, so here's this half hitch cast on one two, three, four, five, five stitches. It's not the six because the six is like a, it's it's like on the other side. Um, it's too tight and um, this nice and loose, this actually works out better um, the way that I've done it. And so now we're going to rotate it, okay? because I want, I'm gonna join these up and then it's gonna become this circle. Do you see how that works, little Pac-Man? Okay, so we're working towards this strand here. Okay, you're ignoring this one. This strand is the working strand. Okay, it's the longer one. Pick up a crochet hook and we're going to slip on this last stitch on the back here, the one that we were just messing with for the center. Okay, slip that off and slide that needle behind if you need to. We're gonna to rotate to the front and we're gonna go in between these two stitches here and go in the front of the stitch uh, to the, into the side, oh gosh, into the middle here. Okay, so I'm going in between these stitches here. See this, see this needle here? I'm not going to the back of this double pointed needle. I'm going through this actual loop that's on the end here. And then I'm gonna use this uh, wood needle as the backboard to kind of hold on to my hook and um, not allow me to drop things. And I'm, I'm actually pulling pretty hard here to keep these strands inside my hook. And then I'm pulling it all the way through these, this loop here. Okay, and it's really tight, but once I slide this off, it will ease up but it allowed me not to drop that stitch. I have dropped the stitch on this before, but when I use these as my backboard, it works so much better than, it, say, a scrap yarn. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. I go in between these two, and I just slip this on here, and then rotate around to the front of it, and then pull this stitch on through. Okay. 
Okay, slip it off that back needle, go to the front, go through these two, because they're, they're as one. This one is harder with the two strands, I gotta tell you. You can get a smaller needle if that will help. Sorry, I'm waiting on sound, hold on. Okay, so you can go between these two and make sure and get the um, both strands. And I may have to use my hook here just to make sure I'm grabbing them right. Okay, so we'll pull through the strands using that as a backboard. And that worked, and then I'm gonna slip this off. You have to be careful while you're doing this that this doesn't slip off this last one. If you have to like pull it out like way further just so that it doesn't have that problem, then you can do that. And then go between this last one. You're just basically rotating between the front and the back, the front and the back. That's really all it is. This is called a Russian join. And once you get going, it does get faster. Again, um, with the two strands, it's harder. It um, Cotton is very unforgiving, but so is the scrubby yarn. The scrubby yarn isn't stretchy, um, and cotton yarn isn't stretchy. However, it's got all these extra strands, and it becomes stiffer the more strands I use, of course. So these both are kind of working against each other, but I promise it's gonna it's gonna scrub up nice. It'll be a good scrubby for sure. Um, let's see. And this one, I didn't draw. Okay, this one I had another strand that was uh, I didn't pick up both strands. I only picked up one, so I went back and picked that up before I continued. And this one dropped. Yep, gotta be careful. Okay, this one here. And then the front. And once you do the front, you should have one left in the back. Okay, you can drop that one and go to the back and then loop that through. Sorry, hold on, I'm waiting. Okay, so we can go to the back and loop that on through and that should be our loose yarn. Pull it all the way through, ta-da! Look at this one, look at this scrubby. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna close this and we're gonna tie a knot together. And, and if you were trying to make like a, your own little circle, um, if you notice this, this kind of dips out, you can tell now that I have more um, a yarn, um, I have cotton yarn in here. So if you wanted, you could get a, um, well, I'm not gonna get it, but you could use a, um, a tapestry needle and you can actually put your yarn to the side here and fake a stitch kind of going around with your tapestry needle and faking that stitch to really close it up accurately and pretty. But, um, and that's like if you weren't gonna be putting this, uh, this loop on here, but I'm gonna put a loop on to show you. So I'm just gonna tie a knot here. This is the only knot that I really do in the project the, on, the, on the side here. Again, there's no knot in the beginning. So now that's all tied together. And then we can make a um, loop for um, hanging our scrubby up when we're, it's not in use. And you're gonna tie a square knot here so it doesn't slip and slide everywhere. It's nice and tight. And there we go. So you have got a nice big scrubby, yay! And it's got a nice little 
loop on it and this was made of course with the bloom loom you can make the smaller one with um, the smaller gauge loom and see how this what the size variance is so let's measure these up and I'll show you the difference this one is two and a half inches where the um, one with the two strands is three almost three and a half so we've gotten a full uh, size larger so that is great. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today on making a scrubby with the Red Heart Scrubby yarn. And uh, please be sure and post yours that you use. Let us know what uh, loom you used and uh, how many strands you used. We'd all love to know. Hope you have a great day and happy looming. Bye-bye. Hey, did y'all like that? And you like the colors? Yeah, I like the pink and purple together too. That was a good one. That that was a that was a real good one. So um, I will tell I will tell you though in this yarn, um, I should have said that in there, but I didn't notice it until I'm picking it up right now. Where the Russian join is, it's um it's stiffer right there, so it's a little more evident um, in the uh, the larger one uh, because of the the yarn. Um, it's stiffer. It's stiffer because of the yarn type. Um, if I was using another yarn, it wouldn't it wouldn't be as stiff as that. But anyway, this is it's still fine. It's still not as much as the knot. The knot is the hardest part on the outside. So, what is the weight of the scrubby yarn number two? Um, scrubby yarn is actually a, a four weight, and um, I think the cotton is a three or four, right? I think. So yeah, it's not a number two. It's still a medium weight yarn. Uh, this color is jelly. I didn't say that in the video. Why did I not say that? But anyway, um, this is jelly and I cannot remember, honestly, I cannot remember if I got this at Michael's or at um, Joann's. I think I got this at Joann's. Yeah, because I got, I got this one at Hobby Lobby. This is a solid one. And why am I saying, maybe I got it at Michael's. I can't remember now. Anyway, if anybody knows, let me know. But I know they all have it, but they all have different colors. So I did like the variegated. In fact, I thought, you know, it might be fun, like say, if you wanted two strands of, stru strands of scrubby, you could do a solid from one store and a variegated from another store, and these two would be really cute together because it would match and it would look like you just had more green in this one. So anyway, thank you again for joining me today. We just did two tutorials in one, super long is the livest broadcast ever. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of people ask me about the scrubby and so it'll be up on Facebook Live and um, it will continue to be there. Um, I will edit the videos down and have two videos. I can't tell you when I'll have that happen because I'm still, I've still got a few more I'm sort of in the queue first. So anyway, I hope you have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow for Knitting Wednesday. Bye everyone.